it's about time I gave you an insight into our new setup as regards integrated goat farming integrated with uh, compost creation biochar creation and inoculation so uh, first off it doesn't always look like this uh, there's quite a bit of hard work to do before we even get to this stage so I'll run you through step by step uh, what the chores are involved in a uh, day by day first off you've got to let the goats out and some of them are quite lazy they don't like to get out in the mornings so uh, they need a little bit of encouragement so normally I just open one side of the blue net open the gate tie it back I don't actually kick anyone out uh, but they tend to come out here and feed on the old gatin from the night before when you first lay gatin out the goats go crazy for it and because we do it like late afternoon early evening we only do one feed now it's the dry season uh, there's quite a little bit of rough stuff left for the morning uh, and while the pasture is drying out so normally we get some dew this time of year it's quite cold in the evenings believe it or not uh, we don't want them out on the wet stuff normally depending on the weather I do a biochar burn uh, I normally do one every two to three days but again it, it depends on the weather uh, it depends on the the leukina uh, on the state of uh, the the dryness of it we wouldn't want to be burning that ideally not not that either that that this is the perfect stuff nice and dry this is just set aside for toons firewood it's quite straight so i'll run that through the electric saw so the goats are normally milling around uh, getting a warm in the morning when i'm doing a burn uh, we've already changed their their water and then they've got a salt and mineral and vitamin mix and some baking soda uh, we just put it on the ground like that and uh, just keep topping it up throughout the morning and then make sure there's a fresh batch in the uh, late afternoon early evening for when they come back my firewood for the biochar i've got two main piles one is normally here i just finished the burn this, uh, this morning so that's all gone some rough stuff there just to put in the pile and we've got pile number two over here so i started the far end so this is about almost two weeks worth looks a lot doesn't it but it's not really so this is just about ready to burn now and I've, we probably get to about here for one burn looks a lot and the, the pits don't look particularly big. I've got I've got two pits at the moment um, but the deep you know they're probably at 45 degree angles going down in a cone shape so you can get quite a lot in there when I first started doing all this I just used to throw it all in a pile like that and it was a big bird's nest and it was a nightmare trying to sort it out uh, to put into the cone pit uh, so I've started putting them all facing the same way and then when I'm ready to burn you can just grab hold of them and slide them towards the, the cone pit and off you go they're nice and brittle so you can just break them with your arms and weather permitting tomorrow or the day after I'll start burning the far end on my uh, on my pile there and I will restart pile number one here so I start it here so two weeks ago it started here and it was all the way to here so you may well ask well Lee where's all this biochar gone well a lot of it went here but you can't really see it now because the goats have done their magic with the hooves there's a little bit here so they break it down a tree it's it's a fine powder now and this is mixed in with the gatin leaves which break down super quick there's little bits of gatin stick here gatin seed skin and leaves falling off the government trees that overhang our land here so i just keep adding biochar here now when we first had the goats had to put the goats here remember they're normally on goat island much bigger setup there um it was raining nearly every day and this was absolutely howling and i'm a real big fan of doing deep litter systems but this took priority because this was about a foot down here and it was just an absolute haven for creepy crawlies like uh, scorpions uh, centipedes snakes all that sort of stuff and of course mosquitoes as well it was all damp so i've just deep littered this so i was just raking it onto here every day and now it's a lovely 
spongy aerated mattress and no smell from here at all no smell from the biochar uh, that keeps getting added there i would say once a week i add to that the bulk of the biochar goes in under the house now we do use a lot a biochar does look quite quite big and bulky when you first empty your your cone pit because it's all this sort of size uh, but it's incredibly light because that's filled with air uh, I think what is it one inch of biochar is equivalent as surface area of a football uh, a football pitch so um, yeah what happens is the hooves of the goats just do that and then it gets worked into the ground so this is and I know it sounds howling uh, this is goat muck goat pee and biochar nothing else and there's very very little smell at all every two days we put a uh, one uh, one cone pits worth of biochar in here and there's no very very little smell of ammonia uh, two days any more than two days then the ammonia starts to get a little bit heavy so the goats are doing the work for us as in breaking it down i haven't got to smash it to pieces all i do is trample it in the in the comb pit before i bucket it out uh, and of course they're inoculating it or some people call charge it for those of you that are in the know and watch some of our previous videos on biochar you never ever put raw biochar on your soil it'll rob your soil of all the goodness that's in there and uh, that's the last thing you want so you inoculate it with all the goodness first and then you put it into your soil and then bobs your uncle it's uh it's not a silver bullet um but i think it's a, a silver tipped bullet as far as fixing your soil goes brilliant stuff now this goat house has totally changed since we first had it constructed and the conversion that we had was funded by several of you very kind individuals uh, through patron and donations and that sort of thing um, and we got one of the guys who uh, normally comes and does the building work for us but he's not the main guy he's not what they call the master builder and although we're happy how he laid everything out well it's Toon's instructions we're not particularly happy with the floor spacing overjoyed with the floor, floor spacing there all the poo drops through an absolute treat uh, but that's because yours truly amended it and when Toon was explaining to him the, the, the size of the gaps that we needed, she gave him a spacer to use in between each one. And he used it for the first few. Then Toon and I had to go off and do a job with the goats. Uh, came back several hours later. And uh, now you can see the difference. So I've still got to take up big sections of this flooring and space them out properly. So I have to go prodding goat poo through some mornings which uh, isn't great we're not currently using the trough uh, that's for when we get really really heavy rain persistent rain and the goats can't go out but remember this this goat house was just really for for 20 very very young goats uh, and it was perfect for them um, you know and then we we lost 10 through the poisoning just just opposite through there through the blue net uh, and, and then of course the monsoon and the uh, the local dam breaking and Goat Island flooding we had to bring everyone over here so it is a bit cramped just through there is our old chicken house initially that was our very very first goat house just there uh, and that that was home to Blackjack, PJ and Hoover our initial three so the the nine remaining goats that we've got left from the the venti herd the small ones that got poisoned uh, they're in there every night and the rest of them are in here now at the moment we have pj and her young daughter april out here and nam dan who's had a dodgy stomach but she's much better now but she's she's got used to being down here at night and ruby who's probably been the worst stomach as far as the herd go but uh, she's all right now but sh again she's got used to being down here so they stay down here night time in here it's Toon's little fire pit you might be bloody hell you got a fire going in your house there's nothing for it to catch fire in here and the way Toon does the fire 
it's more like a, a charcoal pit than anything else. Well, saying that, we've actually got goat muck biochar. <laughs> the two's fire, she starts off with a little bit of kindling, some bigger wood that adds all sorts. It's a bit of eucalyptus, it's big bits of leukina. Uh, and then each day I just sweep up half a bucket of poo uh, and that, that sort of like restricts the oxygen flow into the fire so it, it just smoulders all night keeps a bit of heat in here keeps them helps keep the mozzies out and uh, that in combination with the blue net that we've got round and our new orange solar powered lights up there we've got one there and one there since we've done all three things the goat sleeps so well there's less fighting there's less uh, Michael Flatley feet jumping around all night. You can normally hear the hooves banging around. Uh, but yeah, so they're, they're sleeping well, considering how packed they are in here. When we're getting back onto the island, should be a lot, lot better. Once the goat house is all cleaned and swept underneath, then empty the biochar pit. Uh, and then this doubles up as my sweep up pit. With the rains here, I was sweeping up three times a day. So it was just going straight into there. I wasn't even able to do any burns. It was so wet round here. Uh, but now it's just one sweep up. That's the beauty of being able to get the goats out on pasture. You can clean up properly. Now all this area that's bare was originally like this, but thicker. It was totally thick with this stuff. You're like, whoa, has the goats done that? It was, a, it was a mixture of the goats clearing it and me clearing it, uh, pulling out stubborn roots so that I could clean up properly. Otherwise, you, you can't sweep up. It's a nightmare. With our goats being so sick during the rainy season, not just from the poison, but from parasites and pasture being too lush and getting the trots and all sorts of things like that, just wanted to keep the area as clean as possible, uh, get healthy bacteria in here. And so I thought rather than just leave it all weedy, wherever the the food and the water and all that sort of thing is going to be make sure it's all spick and span but if you can't let your goats out um oh they're ju they're just eating and shitting machines they will not stop so you, you sweep up and of course there's more than there's about 60 goats in here as soon as you sweep up and you turn around they've littered behind you so it's nice to get them all out and uh, start fresh again before i do any biochar burns I just empty the the rough stuff in there uh, and use it as a very coarse mulchalizer around our coconut trees or our permanent trees but our soil around our coconut trees is so so poor anything like that is a is a help when I sweep up the rest of the area I move it over to behind the camera I'm not sure what to call it it's some type of compost pile, a uh, gravity fall compost pile. It's very, very heavy on the carbon side of things. Yes, there's a bit of goat muck in there and a little bit of biochar that's been swept up. Well, this is rakings really, it's the coarse stuff. Um, there's a little bit of greenery, I suppose. Uh, but think of it, well, I think of it as like supercharged wood chips, really and uh, it, it breaks down very very quickly well it's it's certainly falling uh day by day by about half a foot uh, and i just keep topping that up every single day once or twice i think in the end I'll, I'll just do the same as the stuff that comes out of the biochar pit that are swept up I'll, I'll just put it around the trees i wouldn't put it on the vegetable areas as a mulch or anything like that because there'll be a lot of gatin seed in there and although we don't mind gatin growing around our big trees um, because they're nitrogen fixing and the goats eat them as they walk along I'll, I don't really want leukina growing in my vegetable patch now that the goats are allowed back out on pasture I'm not really using my troughs my gutter troughs <laughs> that are knocked together uh, for putting the napier grass in here and for shredded leukina in there so all I do is lay some the, the smaller branches of leukina in there for the small goats the big goats like it suspended on there and and on here and the, the little goats get get smacked by the big ones so a little bit put away 
to one side uh, and then everyone split out I also put a little bit over there around the uh, the tire playground as well and a few of the small ones will go there and eat with my old hanging basket as well uh, dry season we don't really need to use this but rainy season it's worth its weight in gold uh, just put loads of long grass in here uh, and that'll keep a fair few goats busy for quite a while there's a couple more of these on goat island in the old goat house there uh, but say so now now the weather's drying out we don't really need the all three to give you a bit of a heads up guys i will be doing a biochar dedicated video soon and it's it's really to to bring you up to date with what we're doing with biochar and we're actually bringing it to market as well the poor pang farm biochar range so it's like raw raw biochar in various sizes inoculated biochar or charged biochar uh, in in two two different ways of charging it and also uh, biocharged compost as well so yeah we're, we're in the throes of getting some stickers made up for the packaging uh, and then we're going to bring it out on, onto market and advertise it on the website and on our facebook page and uh, put it in the, a link in the description and all that sort of thing but for now i've got to make more and more biochar and i righty ho then gonna go and check on the goat herd see how they're doing